the future is female. That is a slogan we hear a lot nowadays. You supermodels wear it on t-shirts. Hillary Clinton used it in her campaign, the one she lost to Donald Trump. Trump, Trump, Trump. <laughs> you can buy mugs saying the future is female, phone cases, key rings. The internet is basically full of this kind of stuff. But what does it mean the future is female? Is it a promise, an aspiration, or maybe a threat? What I'm going to talk to you about today is what if it's not a slogan, the future is female? What if it's the truth, a simple statement of fact? And what if this truth is brought to you not by feminists or activists or even by Beyonce, but by <laughs> robots? In the late 1990s, the German car manufacturer BMW was flooded with calls. It was flooded with angry calls, angry calls from angry German men. And it was all regarding the new voice navigation system in the BMW 5 Series, because BMW had given the voice navigation system a female voice. At the roundabout, take the third exit. Turn left on the high street, she said. And this infuriated some German men, because they would not take directions from a woman. And this is what they said, and in some instances shouted on the phone to BMW. So things have certainly changed since. And not just our view of women and women giving directions, but our whole approach to these type of intelligent machines, of which the voice navigation system was an example. Today, we don't pick up the phone to customer service and complain about them. We are too busy being scared of these machines taking our jobs. Will you be replaced by a robot? We can read newspaper articles about this almost every week, and they go on listing all the professions that are under threat. Taxi drivers, surgeons, bankers, lawyers, etc., etc. Anything you can do, we read, soon there will be a robot that can do it better. And that robot is after your job. Now, I am a journalist, and I am well aware that there are already robots writing newspaper articles. And last year, as a matter of fact, a Japanese artificial intelligence system co-authored a short-form novel, and that novel was actually passed the first screening for a national literary award. So, yes, the robots are coming. And it's not, well, it's new in some sense, but we have been through this all before. We call this process that we're going through with sort of robotics and artificial intelligence developing and changing the economy, which is happening right now, we call it the fourth industrial revolution, which kind of implies that there's been a first, a second, and a third industrial revolution before. And there has. And maybe they were not on the same scale, maybe not, they were not of the exact same kind, but they were industrial revolutions. So in the 1700s and 1800s, we developed machines that were physically superior to humans in the sense that they could lift more, work faster, and hit harder in the factories. And they entered the factories, and they destroyed lots of jobs, and they created lots of social tension. And what they really did with the labor market is that they made human physical strength less important on the labor market. And this eventually, after all this social tension, freed many humans up from the physical labor to instead focus on the work of the mind. And we got what we call the knowledge economy. What human beings contribute with in this knowledge economy is our knowledge, not our physical strength. 
I think, therefore I am employed, right? So what happens if artificial intelligence gets better at thinking than us? And this is, of course, what we are very, very afraid of at the moment. If the machines get better with knowledge, if they can store more knowledge which they can and process more knowledge which they can, and they will just improve, what will be left for us to do? What will be, to speak economics for a while, our competitive advantage? So I would suggest a few things. Care, relationships, and empathy. All of this is tremendously important for any economy, and all of this requires, at least on some level, humanness. There is a form of consensus emerging that the sectors of the economy that will be relatively protected from automations and the robots coming are sectors and jobs and professions that require what we would call a human touch. So we're talking about things like jobs in nursing, in elderly care, early childhood education, social work and psychiatry. And the skills that where human beings will have a competitive advantage against the robots are the skills needed to do these professions well. So relationship building, empathy, relationship maintaining, etc., etc. Now, what's interesting from a feminist point of view is, of course, that these sectors of the economy that are said to be relatively safe to automation are sectors of the economy very much dominated by women. And the skills required to do these type of jobs well are the same skills that we have been taught to view as female. Skills that have probably not been thought about that much as sort of central to the economy, things that we have largely taken for granted. And if you look at the care sector in almost any economy in the world, you will find women working there, in many cases women of ethnic minorities, for very little pay, often below minimum wage. So what happens if this very, very undervalued sector of the economy and these very, very undervalued skills suddenly become sort of the part of the economy kind of protected from the robots? Will it make us value it more? Will the care sector move from the margins of the economy to the center of the economy? Will the skills required to do these type of jobs well move from the margin to the center in the same way? And will the future, in this sense, be female? Well, some people would say, well, you know, the machines will learn to do care work as well. And maybe they will. There are certain aspects of care work that lends itself very well to automation. And in Japan, they have already developed machines that can lift a patient from their wheelchair and put them on their bed. And Toyota are developing robots that can help with housework or follow nursing assistants around, helping with different things. But I think most of us would agree that there is something about these professions that, at least if you are going to do them well, requires actual human empathy and human connection. And there's also this paradox in, within robotics that uh, basically says that whatever we as human beings find difficult or hard to learn, it's like advanced chess or advanced mathematics, that is quite easy for computers to learn and excel at. But stuff that comes natural to us, like walking or catching a ball or hopscotch, you know, the, even harder in, in these type of shoes, um, machines find really hard. That is really, really hard to program. And in some sense, maybe it doesn't matter that computers can quite easily nowadays beat the world champion in chess, because there's not a single robot out there that is able to come into another person's home and make that person a cup of tea. That is too hard. 
And there's not a single robot that's able to follow your average toddler around a playground and keeping this toddler safe on swings and climbing frames and, and etc. That's too hard to program too. Because all of that knowledge, that type of knowledge, is stuff we humans learn through our bodies interacting with our environment, which of course is difficult for machines. And so what will change with this? There is another thing that I find quite interesting about all of this, about the body, and that's of course that women, we've been expected to do the work that men don't want to do. And a lot of this work in the economy is work around the body. You know, the bearing and raising of children, of course, but also looking after bodies. The old, the sick, the young, looking after men's bodies, so men are freed up to do the work of the mind. And the better women in the econ economy have been at doing this type of work, the more invisible it has become. Will the robots change this? Well, there is a chance, because most of the skills that women have been expected to excel at, or at least do without complaining in the economy, are the exact same things that artificial intelligence really struggles with. So imagine a future where robots and artificial intelligence comes into sector after sector of the economy and destroys jobs. And men who have lost their jobs to artificial intelligence will have to move into jobs in nursing, childcare, and elderly care, because that's where the demand for humans in the economy will be. Now, that type of transition will be in many ways harder than in previous in industrial revolutions, where we had to move people from the countryside, when jobs were lost in agriculture, into the factories in the cities, because to move unemployed men into those type of sectors actually requires not just sort of, you know, it's not just a question of economics and public policy, but also about sort of changing what masculinity is and how we value care work in the economy. But there's a big discussion at the moment about you know, the need for more economic redistribution because of the robots. So taxing the robots and maybe creating something like a universal basic income for people who've lost their jobs. But I think just as important as sort of this discussion about taxing the robots or the owners of the robot or whoever we're going to tax, it's a discussion, what do we do with the money that we raise in this way? And to spend this money into creating good jobs in the care sector, where the human beings will actually keep on, probably, at least for the foreseeable future, to have a competitive advantage over the robots, and where there will be big demand because of our aging societies, that would make a lot of sense. Also, it wouldn't be a bad society we would be creating. It would kind of be like changing the knowledge economy for the empathy economy, or maybe the relationship economy. And in this sense, the machines could actually help us become more human. That is, if we let them. Now, there are a lot of people, a lot of very intelligent people, that say that, no, this won't happen. Artificial intelligence is nothing that will help us. It's an, it's an fundamental threat to humanity. And soon, there won't be anything left that, the robot, that we can do better than the robots. So let's just assume that these people are wrong. I'm not saying there are. I don't know. I can't look into the future. But let's for a moment assume that they are wrong. Are they wrong because they are overestimating the robots? Or are they wrong because they are underestimating their own humanity? And to be more specific, that they are underestimating the parts of their own humanity that we have for centuries branded as female and therefore deemed as unimportant, shoved to one side and said, this is not relevant, not to the economy, not to the society, this is something we are just going to take for granted. But maybe it is relevant, maybe it's the key 
to this whole fourth industrial revolution. Thank you.